Hello and welcome back to Biology. My name is Mr. Kabuski. Uh, we're going to continue talking about ecology today, but today we're going to focus on our human impact on our environment. Uh, no species on the planet has an impact on its environment like humans do. Uh, uh, we can change the course of rivers. We can dam rivers. Uh, we can completely destroy ecosystems, tear them out. Uh, you know, we can hunt species. We can change the numbers of their population. You know, we can move them in, move them out, do whatever we want with them. Sometimes we put new species into environments where even when they're not supposed to be. Okay, so that's what we're going to kind of focus on today. What impacts do humans have, whether positive or negative, on their environment? Okay, so there's three topics we're going to talk about. Again, we're going to talk about this one. We're gonna, then we're going to talk about two of the major topics. We're going to go in depth into them, something called climate change and then something called invasive species. Okay, so let's start here at the beginning again. What impacts do humans have on their environment. So if I take a look at this environment right here, obviously I can tell that humans have had an impact. I can see some lush green vegetation here, okay? But humans have had an impact on that. You know, they've cultivated it, you know, they've planted those there, they water them, they seed them, they fertilize them, okay? And those fertilizers, for better or for worse, you know, obviously they make it green, but what effect do they have on the other parts of the environment? You know, is it good, is it bad, etc. But obviously if you look up here, you can see some big big time impacts that humans have had in their environment. So let's talk about four before we get into the two main ones okay first one acid rain okay now I want you to picture and again I'm talking to those of you in Indiana but anybody can can kind of picture the same thing in their heads here uh, if you're in Indiana and in Indianapolis specifically if you think about the south side of Indy right on 465 there are two huge smokestacks and they're from a company called IPL which provides us with our power here in the city and what that is is a coal burning power plant okay well one of the smokestacks puts off steam and that's the steam is what actually produces the energy uh, you know that was Steam is created by burning coal, which boils water, creates steam. Steam spins turbines, turbines that will create your power, okay, create electricity. But what the other smokestack is for is to give off the combusted gases, the things that you can't really always see. What you see usually when you go past them are the steam clouds. It actually produces literally clouds uh, just made of water vapor. Okay, but the other one you usually can't see produces chemicals uh, that get added to our atmosphere. And some of those, uh, like the SO2 and the NO3 here, get added to our clouds, okay, and then they come back down to the earth as something called acid rain, okay? Now, why is that a bad thing? Now, obviously, if you get touched by acid rain, it not, it's not necessarily going to hurt or harm you uh, just if, you know, walking through it. But what can happen is, at, over time, if too much acid rain is deposited, and it's, say, like, Let's, two examples I'm going to give you, like let's say a lake, okay, well that's going to change the pH of that lake, if you remember talking about pH early in the year, and that's going to cause the, a little change in the environment and it could kill off species, it could, it could kill off populations like these populations of fish that have been killed off because of acid rain because of a local power plant nearby, okay, and then again, here's another example, here's a forest, these trees use a symbiotic fungi or fungus, Okay, to help them uptake nutrients and water through their roots. Well, unfortunately, when the acid rain gets to the, those fungi, it kills them. So now these trees cannot uptake these these wa this water and these nutrients, and then it kills off the trees. And so now I have destruction of habitat. So now the species have to find new homes or new sources of food, and obviously that's going to have a big impact on the environment. So again, acid rain it's something that we're trying to control. You know, we use something called scrubbers in our smokestacks to kind of prevent some of these gases from getting out. So we're aware of the problem. We're trying to control the problem, but again, it still is a problem. Okay. Here's another good example of something that humans have have realized they've made an impact and tried to reverse it. Okay, ozone layer destruction. We actually don't talk about it a lot here in the 2000s the way we did back in the 80s and 90s. Okay, and the reason is is because we've actually kind of fixed the problem. What happened was is that in aerosol cans back in the 80s and 70s they used something called chlorofluorocarbons. Okay, to help the to help the aerosol cans work. And these chlorofluorocarbons, when they were released from an aerosol can, so I sprayed my aerosol can, they would go floating up into the upper atmosphere. Well, the top layer of the atmosphere contains ozone, or O3, three oxygens bonded together as a molecule. And what happened was these chlorofluorocarbons would bond with the O3, make it heavier so it would fall back down towards Earth, okay, and it would create this hole. And it would be magnetically drawn towards the southern hemisphere, towards the South Pole, because it has a negative that has a negative charge. Okay, so I'm creating this hole over the over the of ozone. Well, the problem is ozone protects us from UV rays from the sun. It literally, without it, it would cook our the sun would cook our planet. So the ozone layer is pretty important to us. So back in the late 1980s, early 1990s. 
most countries agreed to outlaw these CFCs uh, and, for, and forbid anybody from putting them in their aerosol cans. And so since we've stopped producing them, stopped using them, the ozone layer over time has actually healed itself. And this giant hole that used to be there now has gotten even smaller and smaller and smaller to the point where it's, it's there. But again, it keeps getting smaller every year. So good job. We have corrected the problem. This is an example of an environmental success story. Okay. Now, Let's talk about one that's not so successful, mass extinctions. Okay, Believe it or not, for the first time in about 65 million years, species are dying off at an exponential rate. They're dying off very quickly. And what's causing that are humans. Okay, And it's not just us killing them by our own hands, but it could be us <clears throat> excuse me, you know, destroying their habitat or introducing new species and those uh, no species outcompete other species in the environment, okay? So there's lots of different things, including overhunting, overfishing, and poaching that are causing a lot of these species to die out. And it's something that we need to be aware of, you know, that we really need that biodiversity to keep our planet healthy, you know, at a healthy level. And it's something that we need to be aware of that we're causing, okay? So Good examples, the polar bear, you know, as numbers of polar bears are dying off every year because of the lack of ice for them to hunt on. They need lots of northern ice to hunt on, and without that ice in the summertime, they can't go get food, and then they end up dying off. Uh, another good example are sh these sharks here, okay? Do you really think these fishermen in this small boat here needed to kill all these sharks? No, they do it because they think killing sharks is, you know, a sport. They think it's fun. You know, they do it for masculinity. They, you know, but they don't ever use any parts of the shark. You know, they may cut off a fin and keep it or boil it and, and say they're making soup out of it, but they really don't do anything and they just leave these carcasses here along the shoreline. Now, that may seem great if you're not a big fan of sharks, but the problem is when you think of sharks, you're thinking of like the Jaws movie, but sharks really all, aren't all that ferocious to humans. They're not a threat to us, but they're a very important part of their ecosystem. They're something called an apex predator, and they keep all the other populations in check. So just just killing them for sport, it really isn't uh, going to be helpful to their environment, and it's something that we need to be aware of. Okay. Uh, and another good example again is poaching. Here's an example. You know, you hear about elephants all the time, but here's another one. Here's a rhinoceros uh, that literally has had his has been butchered just the front of his face for his horn. Because in some tribal communities and in, in Africa and some of these, these type places, they believe that their that horn has medicinal purposes. Uh, some believe it's an aphrodisiac when you grind it up and use it. Uh, so all they do is they go out, they find these these rhinos, and then they will literally just butcher the front of their faces and then leave them for dead. Uh, that's all they do with them, and it's obviously <clears throat> excuse me decimating the population of rhinos because you know they may think oh we're just going to leave it there and it'll be fine, uh, but obviously these poor guys are not going to make it when they're left out in the world, like uh, left out in nature like this. So it's really terrible. But again, this is a, a good example of poaching, you know, of killing off these species that their numbers are already low to begin with. Okay. Now to go along with that depletion of natural resources, uh, deforestation, <clears throat> that's when we cut down large sections of forest, you know, and we use them for either development, like for humans to live on, or we use them for, uh, for, Domesticated animals, you know, a lot of them use them for big ranches for their their cattle and they re raise beef cattle on it. That's what's happening in the rainforest right now. Well, the problem is huge forests like the rainforest, they suck up lots of carbon dioxide out of the atmosphere and then they replace it with oxygen, which we then use. Okay, so if I'm losing carbon dioxide suckers, uh, then that obviously is going to leave a lot more carbon dioxide in the atmosphere, and that's going to cause something called climate change, which we'll talk more about here in a second. Okay, pollution of water. This is actually pretty incredible, if you don't mind me clicking on this link here uh, and showing you this. We'll talk more about this here in a second, but I just kind of want you to watch uh, an example of how we pollute water, and this is, takes place even here in the United States. Just give it a second. I don't know if you realize, but that's literally his tap water uh, that he was lighting on fire, his own tap water uh, out of his spigot there at his house. Okay, and What causes that is something called fracking, and fracking is a process that companies do to produce natural gas. Natural gas is trapped in shale in these rocks deep below the Earth's surface, or deep below the surface of the Earth, so what they do is they literally dig holes they put dynamite down there and they cause explosions down underneath the ground and cause this gas to bubble up and then they capture it and they burn it to produce energy or they use it to heat your home, etc. Okay, sounds great. Well, the problem is it doesn't all get trapped by these, you know, by these pipes that try to collect it. Some of it goes up into groundwater that people use groundwater. If you live out in the country, you can't get to city water. You don't have pipes that bring you water. You literally use wells underneath the ground 
of water, something called an aquifer. Well, if this aquifer gets filled up with gas, that gas comes up through your tap, and then that's what causes what you saw right there, and it makes the water undrinkable, and it gives it a strange smell and a strange taste, can cause all kinds of, you know, problems and birth defects and health illness, you know, health problems. Okay, good example, if you don't mind me telling a personal story, uh, where I used to work in the summertime, when I was in college, I worked at this bus garage, and we could not drink um, and the water we used in the garage because it had been polluted. It was groundwater that had been polluted. So again, this again happens a lot more than you think. Okay, and then obviously, you know, digging up oil, you know, searching for coal and natural gas. Again, all these things are going to have huge impacts on their environment and need to be researched and studied a little bit more. Okay, now let's talk about the two major ones. And I know I'm running out of time, and I'm sorry if I get a little long-winded because there's a lot to talk about here. Okay, climate change. Okay, now this is a hot topic, up for debate. You know, is this occurring? Is it not occurring? I'm just going to give you the scientific facts as I know them at this moment. Okay, so climate change is caused by something that we like to know refer to as global warming. Okay, so when you think global warming, you obviously think, oh, that means the Earth's getting hotter. Well, yes, that's true, but what actually will probably happen is that it's obviously going to cause us to warm up, but that warming is obviously going to cause us to go back into something called an ice age, which we're kind of an in between uh, an ice age state right now. So <clears throat> here's why what causes it. Okay. Uh, here's what it is, basically. Uh, if you study the data, what we see in the data is that the Earth is warming at a trend faster than we have seen in recorded history. Now, there have been, been other times in Earth's history where the Earth has heated and you know, gone through periods of warming and cooling. That has happened, yes. And I'm, that's no, I'm not going to disagree with that. But, uh, but again, the, the thing where people want to argue is they want to say that this happens all the time. Well, it doesn't happen at this rate all the time, and that's what's alarming to environmentalists and to scientists, okay? Now, global warming or climate change is caused by something called the greenhouse effect, okay? Now, <laughs> I could sit here and tell you all about the greenhouse effect myself, but I think they do actually a pretty good job of talking about it in this video. Global warming or none like it hot! You're probably wondering why your ice cream went away. Well, Susie, the culprit isn't foreigners, it's global warming. This is from a cartoon <laughs> show called Futurama. Yeah. And this was made back in the late 90s. Mr. Sunbeam, he comes all the way from the sun to visit Earth. Hello, Earth. Just popping in to brighten your day. La, 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 la. And now, I'll be on my way. Not so fast, Sunbeam. We're greenhouse gases. You ain't going nowhere. Oh, ah, oh, ah, oh, oh, God, it hurts. Pretty soon, Earth is chock full of sunbeams. They're rotting corpses heating our atmosphere. <laughs> How do we get rid of the greenhouse gases? Fortunately, our handsomest politicians came up with a cheap, last-minute way to combat global warming. <laughs> All right. Well, it goes more into the cartoon there, but I don't have a lot of time. We can talk more about that in class. But basically what the greenhouse effect is, <clears throat> the sun produces you know, beams of light that heat our, our Earth. Okay, We have gases in our atmosphere that, tr that trap that heat, and usually that's a good thing. But if we have too many of these gases, it's like putting on extra layers of... You know, in the summertime, okay, you want you want to have like a T-shirt on, you know, and that's going to keep you comfortable. But if I keep adding T-shirts and long sleeve shirts and sweatshirts and then jackets, if I keep adding layers on, obviously it's going to insulate me even more, and I'm going to start to overheat. And that's exactly what's happening here on the in the Earth right now, okay. But the problem with that is that it's melting the ice in the northern and southern uh, poles at a very fast rate, and that's going to cause big time problems. So we can talk more about that in class, okay. <clears throat> Last one, invasive species, really important, especially here in Indiana, okay? An invasive species is a non-native species that's been introduced into a new ecosystem. The problem with that is that their populations will grow rapidly because there's no limiting factors for them, okay? They can eat and eat and eat, but there's no predators to stop them from, from, from to stop their population from growing, okay? Good example would be the Asian carp uh, in the Great Lakes. It's actually here uh, running down the Mississippi right now. We'll talk more about that in class. Ash boar beetles, I'm sure some of you have seen the ash trees that we are trying to cut down to prevent the ash boar beetle from continuing its march uh, across, the con across our continent. 
uh, uh, again, they just kind of go through ash trees and they eat them and kill them. And then zebra mussels uh, and the uh, Great Lakes. Okay. Again, so these are the kind of the three main topics. I only have four seconds left. I hope you learned something. Please contact me if you have more questions. <laughs> I hope you learned something. Goodbye.